Huh? You sleep okay? Nah. I got up in the middle of the night and there was a puddle in my bed. <laughs> you know how relieved I was to find out the roof was leaking. Oh, hi, Rose. Hey, the ceiling in your room leaking too? No, Dorothy. I just finished milking the cow I keep in my closet. <laughs> Gee, with only three hours sleep, I can be as bitchy as you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, we have to do something about the roof. It's getting worse. Forget it. You know how Blanche is. She'll wait for the city to cave in on her before she'll do anything. Blanche, listen. We really have to talk about the roof. Dorothy, I already called the repair man. Last night, the damn ceiling caved in on my bedroom. Knocked <laughs> the sorrow mask right out of poor Ed Rosen's hand. <laughs> Sid LaBasse, you called about your roof? Yes, won't you come in? Yeah, wait a second. I think I stepped in something. <laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> Mr. LaBasse, I want to thank you for coming on such short notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky I came at all. I got a horrible cold. I was so dizzy this morning, I lost my balance getting out of bed. I guess my equilibrium shot. Well, I'm sure you'll feel better once you're up on the roof. <laughs> I think I need to go up there. I could see it was a goner when I drove up. Oh, say it. Well, can't you patch it up or something? Well, yeah, I could patch it up for you, but that won't stop more leaks when it rains again. What are you trying to say, Sid? You couldn't follow that? <laughs> well, she has trouble following murder, she wrote. <laughs> how much is a new roof going to cost, Sid? Ten thousand. Well, how much is a patch job? Uh, a couple of hundred. Look, hey, can I use your phone? I gotta make an important call here. Yeah, go ahead. We have to discuss this. Dorothy, we don't have ten thousand dollars. We can barely afford a patch job. But what are we gonna do? Go without a roof? Maybe we can talk Sid into letting us pay in installments. Oh, that's a great idea. Now he's a reasonable man. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't go for it. Okay, a new roof it is. Look, I, I said that payment was due today, not next Thursday. Now, that check better be on my desk tomorrow or you will regret it, believe me. Understand? All right. We'll talk to you later, Dad. <laughs> oh, well, what do we decide? You passed, John. Fine. I'll do what I can. Well, goodbye. Now, where are you going? My day to volunteer at the hospital. Oh, Sophia, you know it's really sweet of you to volunteer. I like charity work. Besides, I got my eye on an eligible doctor for Dorothy. I hope he likes charitable work, too. <laughs> Listen, Dorothy, I'm going to an art show tomorrow night. I always meet eligible men at galleries. Why don't you come with me? Can I come, too, Blake? Oh, sure. I think it's going to be a great show. It's featuring the work of Mr. Jasper de Kimmel. You ever heard of him? I'm not sure. Has he ever done anything in velvet? <laughs> Jasper de Kimmel's art hangs in museums all over the country, Rose. Some of his paintings are worth thousands of dollars. Oh, here. This is a de Kimmel on this brochure for the exhibit. Hmm. I don't get it. This kind of art does nothing for me. But you have to open your mind to new perceptions. This is non-representational art. I work in a museum, so I understand these things. You see, now, for instance, this slasher color of red across the bottom, well, that represents the setting sun, and this jagged blue line, now, that signifies the ocean. And then this spot of orange up here in the corner, that stands for the planets, and man's eternal struggle against nature and the elements. No, it doesn't, Blaze. That's where I put my creamsicle down this afternoon when I answered the phone. <laughs> see, it rubs right off. Tonight was going to be special. There's nothing but beautiful people here. I'm glad they didn't make us check Dorothy with the coats. <laughs> oh, look, Ma, I think I look pretty damn good tonight. Is it really necessary for you to constantly put me down? I'm sorry, Pussycat, you're right. From now on, I'm going to be a more supportive mother. You look nice tonight. You look better than a lot of other women here. Like, uh, like her, for instance. Thanks, Ma. By the way, that's a man. <laughs> Hey, that's not my fault. 
close out my Christmas club. How much is that? Let's see, we're in January, so this would be week three. <laughs> then I have a retirement account that's about 4000 Okay, I can borrow on my life insurance. That should bring us close, huh? Then it's settled. We're going to call Sid and tell him to go ahead with a new roof. Okay. Oh, Ma, you will not believe what a terrible day we've been having. What are you telling me for? You think I'm hiding Father Flanagan under here? <laughs> Got my own problems. What's wrong, Ma? Today was the worst day I've ever had at a hospital, not counting the unfortunate mistake Dr. Felder made during my gallbladder surgery. <laughs> You ever tried passing a sponge? <laughs> what happened, Sophie? I got stuck with the meanest patient in the history of medicine. I mean, just because a person has two weeks to live doesn't mean he has to be cranky. Oh. Come on, Ma, the man is dying. I mean, have some, have some sympathy. Hey, who met this De Kimmel character? You try having sympathy for a guy like that. De Kimmel? You mean Jasper de Kimmel? That's right, you got it. Pablo personality. Oh, girls, listen to me. When a famous artist like Jasper de Kimmel dies, the value of his work doubles sometimes, even triples. You know what that means? Sure, it means that if he dies, those crummy pictures of his will be worth a fortune. He'll have more money than he'll know what to do with. <laughs> you almost got it, Rose. <laughs> They're going to auction off some of Jasper de Kimmel's art this week. With a piece of inside information like this, we could make a real kill and buy an original de Kimmel. Then we could sell the painting and pay for the roof and still have money to spare. To buy whatever we want. Mm. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold, hold on here. Hold on here. Oh, come on. Now, we're, we're behaving like, like vultures, like, like beasts of prey. I mean, girls, come on. De Kimmel is a dying man. Do we... Do we really want to profit from his misfortune? No. You would be immoral. Uh, we hate ourselves. What time's the auction? <laughs> Eight o'clock. Well, we better get there by 7.30. We want to get there six. <laughs> sleep either. I had a terrible nightmare. Was it the recurring dream where you're a lonely old woman and your family doesn't want you so they put you in a home and never come to see you or take you out on holidays? That wasn't my dream. Oh yeah, right. That was my life. <laughs> uh, please, for the hundredth time, Shady Pines was a beautiful retirement village. Sure, sure. And Attic is known for its top-notch tennis facilities. <laughs> guys doing up? We're conducting a seance to contact Liberace. <laughs> we couldn't sleep. Why else would we be up at 4 a.m.? I couldn't sleep either, but I think it was something I ate before bed. What did you eat? Nothing out of the ordinary. A handful of snow caps, a couple of devil dogs, some Oreos. Oh yeah, and a ho-ho chopped up in a bowl of fruit cocktail with heavy syrup. <laughs> couldn't sleep. I'm surprised you didn't try to kill the mayor of San Francisco. Good morning, girls. Boy, do I feel wonderful. I just had the best night's sleep. Blanche, it's four in the morning. What? Oh, for heaven's sake, I don't believe it. Oh, do you know what happens if I don't spend eight hours in bed? Iranian guys write their cousins back home and tell them not to come? <laughs> No, I simply cannot function the next day, but I always sleep like a baby. How could this have happened? Uh, none of us could sleep. And we all know the reason why. Why? <laughs> you are nothing if not consistent, Rose. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. But hot water and oat bran every morning takes most of the credit. <laughs> you meant, Dot. 
Absolutely. You mean the reason we can't sleep is because we're feeling guilty about profiting from Jasper de Kimmel's impending death. I feel creepy every time I think of it. Oh, me too. All right, look, why don't we just forget the whole thing? What? No one's calling anything off. It's not our fault the man is sick. It's not our fault the man is getting weaker by the hour. It's not our fault he needs a rare blood transfusion. Did you say a rare blood transfusion? Yeah, I overheard the doctors talking. In a day or two, he'll be plant food. <laughs> it still doesn't feel right. Let me tell you a story. Picture it. <laughs> Sardinia, 1932. I thought these stories of yours always took place in Sicily. Can a person go away for the weekend? <laughs> I'm on a tour of the great caper factories of Sardinia. I was a kooky kid going through my piccata period. A wedge of lemon and a smart answer for everything. Anyway, I was, uh, I was slicing an onion when uh, suddenly this big basil tree... Bob, what the hell are you talking about? You're not making any sense. I was hoping the late hour would help to mask that. I don't have a story about taking advantage of a dead guy for money. I got a great story about a Moroccan and a monkey. That really comes under the heading of lust. I'm really confused. Look, life is tough. I'm not happy that a fellow human being is passing away, but it's out of our control. If we don't make a few bucks on this deal, somebody else will. All right, we're all in. Fine. Welcome to the George Bush era. Me, me, me. Now remember, girls, as far as anybody else here is concerned, Jasper de Camus is in perfect health. Right. I'm surprised Jasper's not here tonight. He never misses one of these auctions. Well, it's not because he's dying. <laughs> Girls, the auction's about to start. Ladies and gentlemen, the first item before you tonight is a fine example of Greco-Roman statuary. Uh, may I have an opening bid, please, of 20? I have 20. Do I hear 25? Why are these statues always a naked man? Oh, you see, Rose, the Greeks and Romans always sculpted men. They admired the beauty of the male form. Its sinewy, muscled hardness, its rippling loins, its chiseled buttocks. My, it's getting hot in here. It certainly is. I have 25. Do I hear 30? Rose, you just made a bid. No. Oh. You did this? I have 35. Thank you. to pray that he gets someone to give him 40. It is 35. Going once. Oh, no. Going twice. 40,000. Oh, thank God. Going once. Going twice. So. Look, girls, here comes the paint. All right, now remember, 10,000 is our absolute limit. Next, we have Community Property by Jasper de Kimmel. This is a small piece, but certainly one which will be worth many times its current value someday. Like tomorrow. <laughs> Keeping a secret just isn't your strong suit, is it, girls? Girls, we don't want to be over eager. No, let's be very cool and lay back. We don't want to do anything to heat up the bidding. Who will open the bidding at uh, 5,000? 5,000! <laughs> One of us at a time. I have 5,000. Do I have 6,000? Six. Who will give me 65? Now, uh, watch how I do this. If you really play it cool, you can scare off the other bidders. Uh, 6,500. I have 65. Who will make it seven? I have seven. Who will give me 75? My turn. 75. I have 75. Who will give me 8,000? 8,000. I have eight. Rose, what are you doing? You just bid against us. Oh, I guess I got 
got carried away with the cool part. Oh, Rose, I could just smack you. I have 85. Give me that time. I have nine. Going once, going twice. Unless you ladies would like to pay more. So, nine thousand dollars. We own a DeKimmel. Even though he was a terrible man, I feel guilty. Find out where we can send flowers. Send flowers to yourself. The Yutz is gonna make it. They found a donor with the rare blood type he needed. <laughs> Gee, you save a guy's life. Would you get his apple juice and a cookie? <laughs> myself that every week after 30 something still gives me a headache <laughs> the important thing is that we didn't do anything to feel guilty about that's right ma saved a human life even if it did put us in debt and even if he was the most miserable contemptible slug on the face of this earth <laughs> well look who's here the runner-up <laughs> well i'm here with my crew to get started Said there's been a change of plan. We can't afford that new roof anymore. Well, I don't get it. You can't afford a new roof, but you can afford a painting like that? That's a DeKimmel, isn't it? Yeah. That repulsive trash is an original DeKimmel. And I have always wanted an original DeKimmel. Yeah, don't you just love the style, the technique, the use of color? Yeah, yeah. I'd give anything to own a painting like that. How about that painting for a new roof? You kidding? Of course she's kidding. That painting means everything to me. I could never part with it. <laughs> Sophia! Are you crazy? Crazy about the kibble. Ma'am, would you be insulted if I made you an offer for that painting? Please, I'm insulted by that shirt you're wearing. <laughs> that doesn't mean we can't do business. Talk to me, Sydney. <laughs> what about a new roof with a five-year warranty? And $2,500. In cash? No, in pistachio nuts. <laughs> of course, cash today. Tomorrow the price goes up. The Kimmel isn't getting any younger. What? Well, $2,500 seems a little steep. 3000 You ticked me off. <laughs> now you're watching a real artist at work. with Henry Kissinger. <laughs> what else happened lately? Mike Tyson hosting Masterpiece Theater? Now, why are you so cranky today? I'm not cranky. I'm gassy. <laughs> I had one of those Weight Watchers broccoli or gratis for lunch. Boy, that stuff's murder. I'm surprised Lynn Redgrave has a friend in the world. <laughs> Hey, Rose. Hey, how was football practice? Terrible. It's the laziest team I've ever seen in my life. They didn't bust their tackles. They didn't crack their blocks. They played like a bunch of babies. Oh, did you drop the whistle? Oh, thanks, Billy. That was very nice of you. Now, you two boys run along home. Okay, bye. Billy? Yes? I said run. Move it, you little patty waist on the double! Rose, Rose, take it easy. You're pushing them too hard. I mean, they're only kids. You're right, Dorothy. I've just been under so much pressure. I never would have volunteered if I had known all the work that was involved. I need help. Mostly with your lipstick. And with Kelly of Flight makeup with more finesse. <laughs> Boy, she's really 
you be cranky? Yeah, and you don't want to know why. <laughs> Dorothy, I just had a great idea. Why don't you become my assistant? Oh, Rose, forget it, forget it. I don't want to get involved in sports with you. No, Rose, you're too competitive. You just take all the fun out of it. Well, not anymore, Dorothy, really. Believe me, all I care about is that these kids have a really good time. Well, all right. I mean, if you really mean it, you can count me in. Oh, great. Oh, with your help, Dorothy, we'll kick their butts. We'll chew them up and spit them out. We'll make them eat dirt for breakfast. <laughs> because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Hi, <laughs> girls. How's it going? How's practice, Rose? The boys are okay. No time to chat now. I'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye. You're meeting him again, aren't you? Who, oh, Dorothy? Who? Who else? Tom Gallagher. Blanche, you're too good for him. Dorothy, I will never understand what it is you have against Tom Gallagher. He is a shallow, insensitive snob who stands you up constantly. Dorothy, there happens to be another side to Tom Gallagher that most people don't see. What is it? I don't know. I'm one of those people. <laughs> But as long as he doesn't give me a dirty look when I order lobster, I don't care. Blanche. Oh, all right, all right. Maybe he's not perfect, but I happen to be a little dating slump right now, and I'm just happy I happen to a man who isn't perfect and looking around for one who is. That's what Bush told everyone when he was choosing a vice president. <laughs> I didn't see you. Uh, listen. Ernie, could you freshen my drink, please? Oh, sure, Blanche. Look. And put um, some extra ice cubes in it this time. Okay, Blanche. I don't know I'm... why you all are so stingy with your ice cubes. They are free, aren't they? Blanche. Ernie, you notice how I keep interrupting you? It's because I don't want to hear what you're going to tell me. He called and canceled again, didn't he? Sorry, Blanche. Oh. He told me to buy you anything you'd like. Really? Well, then get out your phone book and open it to the jewelry section. <laughs> No fun being stood up, is it? Listen, mister, if you're looking for a quick score because you think I'm down, then you can just think again. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was looking for a little sympathy. Got stood up myself tonight. Really? Cross my heart. What's left of it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just so darn angry. My name's Blanche. John. John Quinn. How do you do? I don't know about you, but I sure feel too old to be stood up. Well, you're not the only one. This is the fourth time that man is canceled. He just found somebody better, that's all. Oh, Blanche. Yes, he did. Somebody younger and prettier. Blanche, it can't be. Well, maybe you're right. <laughs> somebody younger and as pretty. Yeah, I think tonight maybe the night I finally learned my lesson. No more dates for a long time. You mean that? I do. Well, all right, then. I'm with you. No more dates. Here's looking at you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Oh, I'm so... Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. Did I get you? No, no, I'm fine. But here, let me help you. Oh, gosh, thanks. <laughs> this is embarrassing. I'm going to be the clumsiest guy on earth. No. You don't happen to know a good dry cleaner, do you? Oh, only the best. You know Andre's on Elm? Sure. Well, Andre takes his clothes to this place. I'll write it down. <laughs> thanks. I'm glad it was red wine and not white. Why? Why it's easier to get out? I know, but I spilled some red meat on this jacket at lunch, and I wouldn't want your dry cleaner to think I was ghost. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thanks. I think I'll run along now. Nice meeting you, Mr. John Quinn. Thank you. Same here. Blanche, uh... Better roll. Good night. Good night. Blanche! Yes? I know you're going to think I'm a hypocrite for this, but is there any way I could call you for dinner sometime? Only one way I can think of. What? By looking at that napkin, my number's on it. <laughs> Good night. I got something else for you, John. No, I think I'll call it a night, Ernie. Okay. Take care. Thanks, Ernie. never asked you what it is you all have. Uh, oh, we're not sure. All we know is it makes your skin blotchy and your eyes puffy and your cheeks swollen and you get heart palpitations. Oh, good thing for those palpitations. Otherwise, you might never have known you even had it. <laughs> Okay, here's the game plan. We keep 
it on the ground. Then, when they're used to it on the ground, we attack them through the air. I've used the same formula for 60 years of lovemaking. Trust me, it works. <laughs> okay, everybody, hit the field. Yeah! yeah! You're upset because you can't play, aren't you? Still could, if you let me. Aren't you still two pounds below the limit? Yeah, boy, he being small. Hey, being small isn't all bad. You take it from someone who knows. You mean you? You see Billy Barty sitting here? <laughs> there are big advantages to being small. One, you never outgrow your clothes. Two, you seldom bump your head. Three, the world thinks you're cute. You think Danny DeVito got to be famous with his good looks? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being small, kid, but it is wrong to cheat. You learn in life to follow the rules and play fair. You'll be heads above the crowd. You know, Sophia, all of a sudden I feel so much better. I have a feeling at your age a good cliche would work. <laughs> now eat this. What is it? That's a meatball and pepper sandwich. If that doesn't put the weight on you, nothing will. Okay, get suited up. All right. <laughs> well, just stand there. What? It's your perfume, Blanche. It gives you away every time. Oh, goodness. For a blind man, you're certainly observant. Have a seat. Thank you. Your secretary told me you were meeting somebody here, so I, I won't keep you, John. I just thought we ought to talk. Blanche, if you've come to apologize for last night, I understand. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure you do, John. I like you very much. Problem is, I just don't know what it is you like about me. See, I'm used to men liking me for my looks. At least partly. And, and you don't. <laughs> I sure don't. As a matter of fact, I'm glad I never have to look at you. <laughs> what? That's right. You see, when I like somebody, I get to make up what they look like for myself. And when I like somebody a lot, I make up a pretty nice picture. Would it be rude of me to ask just what that picture is you have of me? Oh, well, you make me laugh, so you got a terrific smile. Yes. <laughs> You're smart and thoughtful, so you've got beautiful eyes. Yes. <laughs> and you're a music lover, so you've probably got a big behind. <laughs> no. <laughs> just wanted to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> I think you're just terrific. I feel awful stupid about last night. Don't, Rich. I know it's not easy. I'd love it if we could make plans for next week, my treat. How about if I call you Monday? Great. <laughs> John? Elaine, hello. Hi. Blanche, this is Elaine. Well, hello, Elaine. Hello. I was just leaving. Oh, John, you and Elaine have a good time tonight. Oh, and just so you know, it looks like Elaine here is an even bigger music lover than I am. <laughs> just got out. Oh, feels like we spent the whole day in bed. You say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> Make way for the victors. You won the big game? No, Rose, we lost and we all changed our names to Victor. <laughs> of course we won. Now it's time for ice cream. Yeah! Yay! You could go and go. Uh, Ma, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Ma. Did you let Billy play? Billy, Billy. Little boy, brown hair. She knows who it is. Uh, he played a little. Ma, that was illegal. Was. I gave him a sandwich so he'd make weight. Unfortunately, on the first play, it gave him a cramp and he had to sit out. But they put it with all of them. I knew that he could. That's because of all the discipline I taught them. Baloney, it's because of the team spirit that I taught them. You're both wrong. It was the statue of Mussolini play I taught them. <laughs> What's that? Everybody piles on the star quarterback on the first play. 
And then he's out of the rest of the game. Mom, Mom, that is a mean, underhanded, despicable thing to do. So was World War II. We're talking about Mussolini. <laughs> Thank you.